Now let me talk to you about the pathology. The pathology showed cancer in both sides of your prostate. However, the cancer did grow into the capsule of the prostate in the area where the nodule was palpable. In that area, the cancer went through the capsule microscopically. Now, some people with that pathologic finding will be cured, and some people with that pathologic finding may at some time in the future have evidence of the cancer coming back. Your seminal vesicles were clean, and your lymph nodes were free of tumor. We cannot change the fact that the cancer grew through the capsule. That puts you into a slightly adverse pathologic finding, but your prognosis would have been altered with any other therapy by virtue of this too. So it's not saying, well, I should have gone for radiation or I should have done something differently because of this pathologic finding. How is that tracked? Oh. It's tracked by his PSA. Uh, and it's tracked by his physical examination. If the PSA were to start to rise at some time in the future, then we would recommend radiation to the bed of where the prostate gland was. But there's a very good likelihood that your PSA will never increase and that the surgery still is curative. <clears throat> I, so uh, what, is the, what is the plan as far as whether seeing if there's any further well, the growth. well, there's no point in doing anything other than monitoring your PSA right now. But again, you should not view this as an adverse pathology report. Once you have a couple of undetectable PSAs under your belt, you'll, you'll be start nice. to feel better about this. Okay? Okay. All right, let's get your catheter out. We don't need, you know, medicine hasn't gotten so bad that you got to drop money on the floor. <laughs> well, as I don't hit the floor. No, you won't hit the floor. <laughs> Okay, so sit up here on the table. Okay, and lie back. All right, good. Okay, so a little bit of separation in that center there, but that'll just heal up. You can just keep a Band-Aid on that. I'm gonna start filling your bladder up with water, and I want you to tell me when you're starting to feel full. I'm starting to feel something in here. Okay. Okay, well, there isn't all that much water in your bladder yet, so you may be feeling slightly full, but you shouldn't be feeling overly full. Uh, getting stronger now. Okay, so you feel like you have to urinate? A uh, little now. Okay, I want you to sit up for me. I'm going to tilt, tilt the table at one second. We'll put the back left. Just relax. Just relax. Okay. Yeah. We're not, we're not there yet. Don't worry. Just take, take your time. Do you still feel like you have to urinate? Yeah. Okay, just let's lift your legs up for one second. Stand up for me. Mm -hmm. On the floor? Yes, down on the floor. Uh, okay, now I'm going to pull your catheter out. Lift up your shirt. I'm going to pull your catheter out. Uh, okay, and as the, now try to hold your urine as the catheter slides out. Okay, get the urinal right there. Okay, that's good. So it's a good urinary stream. That's okay. Now I want you to stand there trying to stop your urine. That's good. Now stand there, not trying to urinate, but not trying to hold it. Okay, are you trying to hold it in or not really? So your urinary control is almost perfect. You have just a very, very little drip. So that means that within probably two or three weeks or four weeks, you're going to have 100% urinary control. Your control is near perfect, and you're doing wonderful. Why don't you try and empty your bladder the rest of the way and get the rest of the urine out, if you can. You're urinating now with a good stream, and you were holding that urination in. So your urinary control is 99% perfect the day the catheter came out, and that's as good as anybody can hope for. Did you say you could have sex tonight? <laughs> you can have it. Okay. And I guess somewhere down the line, if the reading comes up again, then he will go in for some radiation. And again, it won't be the end of the world. It'll take care of it. And so, you know, as far as... The book isn't totally closed, as far as I feel. You know, it's not. And, and I know... I mean, I'm 15 years since breast cancer. Every time I go in for my mammography, I hold my breath and wait for those results to come out. And I think everybody who's been through this kind of thing, 
does, especially where there's you do another follow-up test and another follow-up test. And it, it's only as the years and the months go by that you kind of, you put it in the back of your mind and you, you think, well, it's, it's over. But it's, there's always a part of you that says it's, it's never over. You had it and it's gone, but it's never totally erased from your mind. At least in my case. I mean, the purpose was to remove the cancer. Even if it didn't, re I wouldn't particularly have been concerned that I had it done. I wanted it out. Why would you leave cancer in, a, in an organ that you can remove, which isn't particularly important in your life, particularly at the age of 68? Almost 69 in six weeks.